Okay guys, this is a quick video of how to configure in Polycom Soundpoint IP, IP33 series phone. Um, other Polycoms have the same type of interface. You can probably use this uh, configuration video as a stepping stone of how to configure yours. But this is just an example of one of the phones that we were able to get a hold of which was the IP330. A uh, few things you have to understand about this particular model and also models similar to this one, very similar to this one, is how to put in the username and password information from your provider. Uh, for example, if they give you the SIP username, SIP password, and SIP domain, you will put these specifically in these orders. Now for the line one or line two, it depends on which line that you want, it's recommended that you put the display name, and authentication user ID the same as the SIP username. So let's say your SIP username 678460 which for us it could be the same the number that you purchased with us or it could be a specific ID that was given to you but let's say for this example our SIP username is this number here so and the address would be two way with, this is one of our endpoints. So once you give this SIP username, you're going to use this in many different spots. You can use this also inside of the user ID. Let's say the password is one, two, three, four, just for, for giggles here. Label, you can leave that blank. I'm sorry, I'm actually made a mistake. This, this is one of the mistakes I was trying to point out earlier with this device. The address is actually your username again. I, I do apologize for that. These are one of the things that I want to go over with, with uh, our end users because of that. It, it kind of tricks you here. Okay, so the do display name, you can change that, but for this, we can keep it the same. The address is to, it's your actual SIP username. The user ID is also your SIP username. Of course, the password is given to you. The label, you can make it anything. Uh, you can leave that blank or you can put something there like my office PBX. Third party name, I will leave that there. You can also put something in there. Rest of that is fine. Now for the server one, this is where you're going to put the domain. So let's say your provider's domain is twoway.ipcoms.net. You put that there and they said they allow port 5060 for the SIP signaling port. One more important thing is changing the transport UDP only or TCP only but some, for some reason these for some of providers the DNS snap to is not right doesn't work correctly I'm not sure why but for our service we prefer UDP UDP only expires this is the registration expires you can set it to any uh, uh, time that you want but we prefer to setting it at least uh, 60 seconds and higher so for this bill, we say 180 just for reason. For register is either zero or one. Register equals no, or if it's one equals to yes. It actually register without this. So you might want to check with your provider or with your phone firmware to see why it still works. But you can put a one there. Register timeout, you can leave that blank. And the rest of this, uh, page is blank you can make the changes if you want to but it's not needed for our service no a few other things you want to have to change after you sub submit this line one option you want to go to network no and be sure to set your NAT rules if your device is on a simple router it cannot change IP addresses going out most routers cannot unless you have a very good you know ASA or PIX firewall or Cisco firewall or even Sonic wall um, to avoid any of that confusion you actually can set the IP address here so here you want to set your external IP address and to find that if you don't know it uh, you can actually go to whatismyip.com or you go to Google and type in what is my IP address and it will give you a certain IP address that looks different from your internal so you put the IP address in here so let's say the IP address is I don't know uh, let's use Google's DNS 8.8.8 .8 .8. let's say your, your external IP address is that 
Signal port still gonna be 5060 unless told otherwise. Media port start unless told otherwise is probably between 10,000 and 20,000. So your your start should be probably 10,000. And keep a live interval. You can leave this blank, or if you still want this to work for as constant send you SIP options or SIP pinging, just make sure that the phone is there or the connection is still active. I will put roughly 60 for 60 seconds. After that, you submit uh, from the first line one that you already submitted. Submit this line here, and you should be able to register. At least that is the the idea of it. It should work just fine. There might be issues. You can't find out why it's not registering. Of course, talk to your provider, and they can do a few call traps, call traces, just to see are they getting any traffic from you. And of course, they will go through the normal. SIP procedures and VoIP procedures with you to get it to work. But that is really the gist of the Polycom sound point. Most of the interfaces to me I, that I've seen is very similar to this and it works very similar but of course there are different ones. Now if any of the Polycom devices that we review that's not part of what you have or you have a different model, different version, different firmware, of course let us know so we can get that copy of that ver firmware and we can try and make a video of it of how to register it and that was it guys this was just a quick video for the polycom i figured this was a very important video because we don't have a lot of videos regarding polycoms and especially with the actual phone itself and we tend to see a lot of end users using polycom now so we want to make sure that we have the videos to cover so this is one of many videos regarding polycom or any other devices that we have for you guys so anything that we do not have just let us know and we will try and get a video up as soon as possible.